Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Friends, this is our second video on inverter AC board. Last video we detected that the bridge rectifier is short circuit. So I disconnected the bridge rectifier from the circuit and uh, I also removed this IPM module from the board. We have to inspect our this portion before uh, going to the further repair. We have to remove this IGBTs, these IGBTs. We have to remove the diodes. Just pull out here. Remove bridge rectifier IPM because these are connected on these plastic mounting. Now we have four catches, four plastic catches, one, two, three and four. And if we want to pull it, push it back, might be it will break. So we have a guide pin here in this hole. We have to push it, push it, push it down and press it back. Press it to th this side because we have space in this portion. So just only press it and push it. So our this component tray is open. Now we can check this portion. It have damage. And we can see a damaged contact. So we have to inspect it carefully. And we have to check the tracks. And then we have to check the continuity with other side because this IGBT was damaged. So we have to repair this track. Our this bridge rectifier is also damaged. We can check it because now it is outside from the bolt. Set multimeter to diode mode. So our in this point of bridge rectifier is positive positive output pin so connect black lead to the positive output pin which is at the cut so we have bridge rectifier short it is giving one diode is okay but one diode is short now move this lead at this pin we have one pair in the bridge rectifier that is short now move red lead here it is giving continuity in both directions so so this diode is short circuit now check so in this bridge rectifier we have four diodes two diodes are short circuit and two diodes are good so we have to replace this bridge rectifier and we have to repair this track. Input protection for high frequency, over voltage, differential modernizes, common modernizes, first stage filter, second stage filter, then over current protection from surge currents and bypass system. And then we reached at the bridge rectifier. If you want to watch this video I will suggest to watch this video before we continue to this session if you had not if you have not uh, watched that video you can go to the video we discussed after passing all protections we reach at bridge rectifier bridge rectifier takes AC input and rectifies and gives DC voltage. So bridge rectifier is located here. The inner both terminals are AC input terminals. AC terminals. And this one is output and this one is output. So we have to follow this line for negative and this line for positive voltage and we will continue on these lines. First of all, see here, we take positive voltage, then we have RV1, RV10, sorry. This is MNY15, it is MOV, 
metal oxide resistor voltage resistor and then we have a capacitor which removes the ripples positive line here now we have to check the negative line so negative line this is output and from this point we reach here here are bypass cylinders and reaching here so negative line will reach the other end of this MOV positive here negative here both capacitor and MOV are connected in parallel in positive and negative line then the positive line from this point will come to these inductors choke reactor we have two reactors one and two and if we see here this reactor have four pins in this side and four pins in this side it have two coils one and two either we have inductor on the board reactor on the board or outside from the board so it will be the same so here it is using two chokes two inductors two reactors in series the first one from this point to this point and this from second inductor the same coil is here one two we have bridge rectifier then we have mov then we have capacitor which we discussed these are here and after that we have four coils one two three four two in this series two in this series in the output terminal of the second coil we reach here here we have IGBT collector of this IGBT and from first coil one two three four from this line this is coming to G1 we have two IGBTs one two and in the same point here we have D2 rectifier D1 rectifier we have this rectifier and this rectifier one two two IGBTs two rectifiers so coil is connected to anode and cathode is connected to capacitor positive terminal so we have one two three capacitors these are in parallel anode cathode and in this coil anode cathode so both cathodes are connected on the same point same potential first coils are connected to collector of first IGBT second coils are connected to second IGBT we have two diodes the both diodes the both cathodes of both diodes are connected to the same point and these are connected to one two three capacitors in parallel 680 microfarad 450 volts then from this same terminal the output terminal from this point we have MOV here and one ripple remover capacitor here one two two components one for over voltage second for the ripples so one MOV is connected here the second connected the and secondly we have a capacitor so in the output of bridge rectifier if we have any over voltage or high ripples over voltage will be terminated from here if we have high voltage it will become short and it will damage the bridge rectifier and next circuit will protect it as we discussed here if the input terminal in our last video as we discussed if we have over voltage here high voltage surge it will become short and it will damage the fuse it will damage the first input component and it will protect the next circuit because it will make a short circuit so if over voltage condition occurs it will become short and it will damage this bridge rectifier and it will protect the next circuit then we have these coils one two three four IGBT and 
in the negative side of the negative output terminal of the bridge rectifier if we see here we have rs2 shunt resistor it is 8.2 milliohm 8.2 milliohm two shunt resistor in parallel current will pass from this shunt and it will reach here to the emitter of this igbt and to the emitter of this igbt so both emitters of both igbts are connected at same potential two shunt resistors then it is connected to both emitters and from the same point if we come in inside this is connected to capacitor negative terminals this line so positive will reach through inductors and diodes but the negative line will reach through this shunt resistor we have three other shunt resistors these are for second subject but this time we will discuss in negative line these shunt and current will reach at this point and it will also reach at the capacitors then it is negative rail and if two, these two components are off igbts are off rectified positive voltage will reach to the capacitors from both inductors both diodes when this igbt is off this igbt is off and routine flowing current will reach from negative terminal to the capacitor negative terminals so the system will keep monitoring always the current from this point because our this line this end of shunt is connected to this line and it will pass the information of the dropped voltage to the processor after passing these jumpers from here from the inside of board it will reach here so if any time let's see the diagram if any time for example our, our this igbt becomes short circuit so it will cause to make positive this line it will if igbt is short circuit it is not working in that case it will cause to flow high current so voltage will drop on this shunt and this voltage will go to current sense line to the processor if this igbt makes problem at that time our this shunt will make sense line high any component will try to draw over current in that case our this shunt will measure the voltage or if there is no shunt in any circuit for example we discuss the sharp sharp ac board there is a current a current transducer current transformer if there is a current transformer in that case it should be here it becomes in the square or rectangular shape it will measure that current that is used in ac line current transformer is used in ac line but current shunt shunt resistor will be used in dc line negative line if it is using current transformer in that case it will measure the amount of current and it will transform this amount of current in form of voltage and voltage will be rectified and this voltage rectified voltage they will translate the amount of current so this current value will transfer to the processor to determine the amount of current flowing in the system for overcurrent protection if any time overcurrent will flow the more voltage will generate will transform in secondary of this current transformer so current transformer will transfer this voltage and system will know that there is something short circuit and in this case it is used used in dc line so if any component will draw more current these more voltage will go to the system to determine how much current is flowing over there
so this is our pfc circuit power factor correction circuit this one reactor igbt diode for example we get 300 volt from the bridge rectifier from this point to this point we take 300 volt but for system operation for example i need 350 volts at that time there is a pfc controller power factor controller either it is ic or either it is using microcontroller or some ic like that if it is controlled by the microcontroller it will generate pulses and it will drive these igbts we will ju just discuss one igbt it will give pulse to the gate to the base of this igbt if there is no drive pulse the voltage will pass and it will cause to run a steady current when from a coil there is a steady current there is a dc current then there is no change in current then there is no varying magnetic field so voltage will pass current will flow and it will start the voltage at the same voltage if we give a pulse to the to the base in that case this igbt will switch and it will cause to make a surge it will cause to flow the current in this line so it will cause to generate magnetic field by varying the amount of current because it is it will provide a short circuit for a while how much time how much time it is on so current will flow when heavy current will flow it will cause to induce magnetic field when this magnetic field will increase so this magnetic field will store energy in, the, in this inductor now in the off time when it will turn off the gate the current will stop this expanded magnetic field will collapse when it will collapse it will generate reverse emf it will generate voltage in the inductor so that voltage will become opposite in the direction first this end is positive now by the collapsing magnetic field this end will become negative this end will become positive so both voltage will become in series for example it will generate 50 volt the magnetic field will collapse so this 50 volt source will add it in 300 volt so we will receive 350 volt at this capacitor and this amount of voltage will come to feedback to the controller so this controller will maintain the voltage level here if the voltage will decrease it will increase its switching if the voltage will increase it will decrease so it will maintain the switching time time on vs time off if the voltage at input line will drop so it will increase its switching to increase the voltage at this point so it have to regulate the voltage at this capacitor now in this case we are using two igbts when it needs too much regulated voltage because it is it need high current to maintain the voltage it is using two stages one igbt two igbt one will on the second will off when this will on this will off so it will work vice versa opposite to each other so that there will no huge surge in the main dc rail then it will maintain the voltage at these capacitors if we have overcurrent issue might be we have problem in the igbt's IPM, intelligent power modules. Sometime there is no IGBT and there is no diode. In that case, there is a PFC module that have built-in IGBTs and built-in rectifiers. So it have just only the input voltage, and it will drive the reactor and it will give charging voltage at the capacitor to maintain the voltage. Sometime in some boards we have just only one IGBT and one diode. Here we are using two IGBTs, two diodes, two reactors. If we have just only one reactor, the function will remain same. Now, if we have overcurrent issue, for example, E8, HA8, L5, 60, P1, P4, any code which will translate to 
over current issue then we have to monitor this area or if it is not using a shunt resistor if it is using current transducer current transformer then we have to go to the current transformer section and the voltage at this DC rail are monitored from one to three resistors one two three resistors so these three resistors and this resistor network these voltage are transferred from this point to this point to the processor so this controller will monitor the DC voltage because it is voltage divider network and we will receive this voltage information here and this information will calculated and it will determine the charging level and in that case it will drive these relays bypass relays where are that k1 and k2 to bypass these and ptc's positive temperature coefficient resistors so if it, it gives high or low voltage error in that case we have to check this section if it is monitoring the DC line from DC rail that's good sometime we have here resistor network and one optocoupler is connected and the same information as we discussed current transformer the same information will transfer voltage transferred in the sharp we have this diode one two three four five six resistors and then we have optocoupler and this voltage feedback will transfer to the controller and it will check the input voltage but here this board is monitoring voltage from this point so this is our DC rail and then we will continue to it is IGBT drive we will discuss when we will discuss this IPM drives and uh, control section we will discuss this drive signal in our upcoming video now we discussed just only the DC rail how the DC circuit is working if this MOV becomes short due to over voltage in this section the capacitor will not charge and our bridge rectifier will might be damaged and in that case we will take high current protection over current error if any component IGBT diode these components these components will damage we will take over current issue and we will take under voltage issue because when these components will become short circuit these components will draw the current more current than the rated value because normally they are open but if any component will become short circuit it will draw more current so it will cause to drop voltage in the DC rail it will generate over current under voltage so friends I hope so this video is informative for you if it is informative give a thumb up and if you have not subscribed my channel subscribe it and if you want to watch my videos in future press the bell icon button thanks for watching assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh